Zollinger Ellison syndrome or ZE syndrome. Essentially, this is a gastrinoma that is essentially a tumor that occurs in the pancreas and it produces gastrin. And gastrin leads to the stimulation or production of increased gastric acid and this causes stomach ulcers or peptic ulcers. So that's the most brief summary of ZE syndrome. So let's talk a little bit about gastronoma. A gastronoma, as the name implies, is a gastrin secreting tumor and it's produced or found in the pancreas. Now gastrin is a very important hormone that stimulates the secretion of gastric acid. This gastric acid is uh, secreted by the parietal cells that are inside the stomach. Well excess acid in the stomach that is being uh, produced because of the excess gastrin is going to lead to stomach ulcers and in particular peptic ulcer disease. And the patient's symptoms essentially will be epigastric pain and this epigastric pain is pretty severe. It's described sometimes by the patient as burning or gnawing type of a pain. The patient may also have coughing associated with it and these ulcers can sometimes uh, perforate and also bleed. And about 50% of uh, patients with ZE syndrome will also have symptoms of diarrhea along with the uh, peptic ulcers. One thing that's really important to remember is in about 50% of cases of ZE syndrome, you also have some syndrome known as MEN1. And MEN1 essentially is multiple endocrine neoplasia. Now what that is very briefly is a set of tumors that occur in what I like to remember as the three P's. It's tumors in the pancreas, pituitary, and parathyroid. So the pancreas tumor is what's causing the ZE, but you also have two additional tumors in MEN1. And the parathyroid tumor produces excess amounts of parathyroid hormone. And if you remember the mechanism of how parathyroid hormone acts on the body, it increases calcium levels. So the patient will have hypercalcemia. So how would you go about diagnosing this? The best test is a serum gastrin level. And it will be oftentimes very high, greater than 1,000. Uh, whereas uh, most people are hovering about 150. A test that you can do to check the ulcers is an EGD and that looks directly into the stomach and the duodenum to see if there's any ulcers. Now of course we're talking about a tumor so you need to do an imaging test to localize the tumor and that imaging test is an abdominal CT and that will help to identify the tumor in the pancreas. And then a lot of times because of the symptomatology, a lot of physicians will do a helicobacter pylori test and the reason is because H. pylori can also cause very similar symptoms. So that test is also done, but in ZE the test will be negative because that's not the main problem. In terms of treatment, the very first thing you want to do is suppress the acid because there's just so much of it and that is done with a proton pump inhibitor and proton pump inhibitors are very commonly used. One of the most commonly used, of course, is omeprazole. Another medication that you can use to decrease the gastric acid is octreotide. And then when it comes to the tumor, it really needs to be surgically removed. And if you have an unfortunate situation where metastasis has occurred of the tumor, 
then the patient will have to be treated with chemotherapy. So let's take a look at a few vignettes. Patient complains of daily burning epigastric pain of four months duration. He states that he is sometimes awakened at night by coughing spells and a burning in his throat. He has also been having diarrhea. Basal acid output using a nasogastric tube is measured to be 15 milliequivalents per hour and normal is less than five. An antral biopsy is negative for H. pylori. Fasting serum gastrin is measured at 1,000, and normal being less than 150. Which of the following is the most likely ex explanation? Well, the fact that his gastrin is so high is really an indication of gastrinoma. And along with the symptoms, he definitely fits the picture for ZE syndrome. Next question. 39-year-old man comes to the office because of gnawing abdominal pain and diarrhea for the past two months. He states that the pain is worse about three hours after a meal, and it often wakes him at night. He says, surprisingly, the pain is relieved by food. He takes an NSAID every couple of weeks for headache or backache, does not smoke cigarettes, has a couple glasses of wine on weekends. He vaguely recalls that his father and brother had similar symptoms in the past. Physical exam shows epigastric tenderness midway, before, midway between the xiphoid process and the umbilicus. There is no rebound. You prescribe amoxicillin, bismuth, and metronidazole and tell him to return in two months. He returns for his follow-up appointment and says that his diarrhea is still present and that the abdominal pain has not decreased in intensity. Physical exam is unchanged. Lab studies show hypercalcemia. At this time, most appropriate management is. Well, what the doctor initially did right here with those three meds is treat him for H. pylori because that's one of the more common uh, scenarios that will cause these types of symptoms but it didn't help now what's interesting is labs is hypercalcemia why is that happening well if you remember ZE syndrome about 50% of the time is associated with MEN1 and MEN1 is a tumor in the pancreas pituitary and parathyroid and the fact that he has a parathyroid tumor is what's causing him to have elevated PTH and parathyroid hormone essentially acts by increasing the calcium level in the blood. So it's a good question and I think the best thing to do is investigate a possible ZE and that will be done with the serum gastrin level. Choice A. And finally, 40 year old white man has been treated for peptic ulcer disease for several weeks. He also has diarrhea, a problem which has not had in the past. He denies taking NSAIDs either by prescription or over-the-counter. You treat the patient with a three-week course of an H2 blocker, ranitidine, but the patient's symptoms only slightly improve and recur fully within days after discontinuance of the drug. You then prescribe the hydrogen pump-blocking agent omeprazole for three weeks with similar disappointing re results. An EGD then demonstrated a large ulcer distal to the duodenal bulb. During the procedure, studies were done for H. pylori that were negative which of the following would be the next logical action. Well, he's definitely got an ulcer in the stomach, and it hasn't uh, been uh, helped with these basic medications such as ranitidine or meprazole, and his H. pylori is negative, so you have to think of some other etiology. And a very basic test that you can do without too much expense is a serum gastrin level, so that would be choice A.